I spent the last month with the new 15 inch Microsoft Surface laptop and I can honestly say that it's everything that I wanted from a Windows laptop for a long time. From performance and battery life to design and even the trackpad, it makes everything I do on a Windows laptop better and more enjoyable, even though the new processor may not be suitable for every app yet. But yes, for regular everyday use, this laptop rocks. And what is it that I use this machine for, you ask? Well, this machine is not my video editing machine. It's not a blender machine or a 50,000 gigapixel photo editing machine. This is a productivity machine for me, like how I use my MacBook Air. Over the last month, I've used it for lots of web browsing, for all of my day job office apps and web apps and logging into servers and Citrix remote apps, email, social stuff, and yes, watching video too. This is my take to the office laptop and my work from couch companion. And as I will mention in the performance piece of this video, this laptop was not built for and apps are not yet updated to be able to do high performance tasks. For that, you may still want to get an Intel or an AMD PC. These Snapdragon Elite machines are new and it's going to take some time for everything to come together before we see the true potential of this machine. I knew this when I bought the machine and I never thought it could replace my video editing workhorse. But for everything that I'm using this laptop for, it is really fast, really impressive, and an actual joy to use over any other PC laptop I have ever used. This is the 15 inch Microsoft Surface laptop, the seventh generation with the Snapdragon Elite X1E 80-100. So the middle of the high-end version. It has 12 cores at 3.4 gigahertz that can get as high as four gigahertz. There's a six core NPU with up to 45 trillion operations per second and an Adreno GPU. The one that I have right here is the 16 gigabyte model with a user replaceable 512 gigabyte SSD for $1499. Although you can go with a 256 gigabyte version for $1299 and all the way up to 64 gigs of memory with a one terabyte SSD if you really wanna build it out. As far as ports go on the left side of the surface, there's a headphone jack, a USB type A port and two USB C, USB four ports. They're not Thunderbolt like you'll find on the Surface Laptop 6 or even on other Apple laptops. This doesn't really mean much in most use cases because you can still get up to 40 gigabits per second for SSDs and docks and displays and whatnot, but you can't use external PCIe enclosures like external GPUs. On the right hand side, the 15 inch version has the Surface Connect port and a micro SD card slot. I would prefer a full size SD card slot because I really have no use for a micro SD card slot. And I know that a lot of people complain about the Surface devices having a proprietary connection for power and other connections, but really, you don't need to use it. I never ever use the Surface charger because I would rather just travel with one cable. I would rather just carry a single USB cable and charger for all of my devices. Like, you know, something like this that you can get from channel partner, Ugreen. This is the Ugreen Nexode Pro 65 watt ultra slim charger, and it can fast charge up to three devices at the same time. With one USB-A and two USB-C ports, this charger is compatible with phones, tablets, MacBooks, PC laptops, anything that you need to charge. With the capability to charge at up to 65 watts, you can charge a 13 inch M2 MacBook Air from zero to 51% in just 30 minutes, or the latest Galaxy phones at full speed. My favorite part of the new charger is how ultra slim it is. I mean, this thing can easily slip into any bag or purse to take with you anywhere you go. When I stay in hotels, sometimes there's very little room behind the nightstands, making it difficult to charge your devices. I don't need to worry about that with the new Nexode Pro because it fits easily into tight spaces and allows the cords to go straight up or straight down behind the furniture. And speaking of traveling, you may also want to check out the new Ugreen Nexode Power Bank 25,000 milliamp hour, 145 watt battery that can also fast charge up to three devices at the same time. It even has a digital display that shows you exactly how much charge you have left which is one less worry when traveling. So if you wanna check out the new Ultra Slim Charger or the 25,000 milliamp hour power bank or Ugreen's Prime Day deals, you can save up to 41% by using the links in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. The updated Surface Laptop has a number of design changes from previous versions. There are no longer Alcantara models and instead starting this year with the Surface Laptop 6 a few months ago, they all come in aluminum and that's probably the right choice. But I always liked how warm the Alcantara felt and I thought Microsoft was doing something different with it and I really liked that. So I'm kind of sad to see that option go away. There are four different color options you can get with the 13 inch version of this laptop, including Sapphire, Dune, Platinum and Black, but the 15 inch version only comes in Platinum and Black for some reason. And the black version that I have here has been surprisingly good at not collecting a ton of fingerprints. I didn't wipe this off before recording this video. I wanted to leave it exactly as it is. And as you can see, 
it's done a pretty decent job of not looking completely gross. Even on the inside, if we open that up, you can see around the trackpad, there's really not much there to complain about. Now, because it's black, it will collect some dust, but generally the dust and even the fingerprints are pretty easy to just wipe off with a microfiber cloth. The bezels around the display have been reduced finely, giving the surface an updated and modern feel. Unlike how Apple keeps similar sized bezels on each side, including the top, except for the bulge for the notch, Microsoft went with a larger top bezel. And it felt a little bit weird at first, but just like with the notch on a MacBook, once you start using the computer, you just stop noticing it. I simply love how Surface devices look. I've owned five of them in the past. I believe Microsoft has the best designed PC laptop hardware, similar to what I will find on a Mac. They don't always have the most bells and whistles like an OLED display, but when you look at the entire package, it is more of what I want. From the slight wedge shape to the top sides and angular bottom case, there's nothing about this design I don't like. Well, except one thing. There's actually nothing here to help you open up the display. There's no cutout for your finger. There's no easy way to get your finger underneath the lip of the display to raise it up. I frequently find myself needing to use, or basically always need to use two hands to be able to open up the display. There's just nothing there for your thumb to grip. And if you just try and push, sometimes you can get it, but sometimes it just pushes the laptop away. This is a rare miss in the Microsoft hardware, I think. And hopefully that'll be corrected on the very next model. When it comes to the keyboard on the Surface Laptop 7, I find it to be similar to the Apple Magic Keyboard. I like the layout, I like the key travel, but I do find them to be just a little bit more mushy than Apple's keyboards. It takes a little bit of effort to change between them and I make a few more mistakes when typing on this, but if I wasn't switching back and forth, I would quickly be able to adjust full time to this keyboard. And just below, I love the upgraded trackpad on the Surface Laptop. Microsoft has had haptic trackpads on higher end devices, but this is the first time on the Surface laptop and it's the best trackpad I've used on a Windows machine, period. Because it's haptic, the thing does not actually move or push down and click a button. There's no physical click or lever to make it click. It senses pressure and vibrates, so it feels like a real click and it really does feel real. And you can click anywhere. It's not one of those diving board trackpads and those are the biggest annoyances when I move to Windows laptops is using those stupid diving board trackpads where you have to click at the bottom. I hate that. The size of the trackpad is fine. It's not quite as big as what you're going to find on a MacBook Air, for example, but there is plenty of room to do multi-finger gestures for swiping and scrolling and switching apps and whatever else you need to do on there. But there are a couple of issues that I've had with the trackpad that I expect Microsoft will fix in a update pretty quickly. One is that sometimes I'll move the mouse to where I want it and it will just skip a little bit further than where I intended it. It's slightly annoying, but it happens every now and then, along with false clicks. So Kyle Erickson on his video explained that sometimes it would click buttons when he was scrolling on web pages and things like that. I haven't seen that, but where I do notice it is if I'm hovering over a YouTube video as I'm playing it, it will suddenly stop playing or suddenly start playing again without me actually touching the trackpad. And it's not a deal breaker or anything or something to make me not recommend this laptop, but something to be aware of, and I do expect Microsoft will update it fairly quickly. Moving on up to the display, this is a 15 inch, 201 pixel per inch display with a three by two aspect ratio, and it's a nice looking display. The Surface doesn't get OLED like some other devices, but it does get up to 600 nits of peak brightness, which is bright enough for basically anywhere you're going to be working regularly, and it has up to 90% of P3 color, which is great. The Pixel Sense display is a 120 hertz variable refresh display, so all motion, whether you're scrolling or moving a window around the display, looks very fluid and smooth. And of course, this is multi-touch, so you have the option of using your fingers to actually drag or click or scroll or zoom or whatever you want. And I usually want to do this when I'm sitting on my couch and I have this thing in my lap where I just wanna be able to reach up and flick the screen with my finger. I don't always wanna to have to bring my hand down to the trackpad. It's really just nice to be able to do that sometimes. And I really wish Apple would consider it for their laptops because I don't wanna use it as my primary input method, but it is nice to have sometimes. I do like this display overall, but I did find that the contrast was a bit lacking when watching video. And I don't see it with my naked eye, but the camera does pick up some unevenness in the color uniformity across the display. The one issue I do have with this display is the reflectivity. This thing is super reflective. You see yourself, you see every light around you. This thing is a glare magnet and you do have to be careful about how you position the display so that you can actually read it when you need to. As far as external displays go, the Surface has a big benefit in supporting up to three external displays along with the internal display. 
It was a bit buggy at first trying to get all of them lit up because I had them all connected with USB-C and a USB-4 dock, and it took some plugging and unplugging and rearranging and changing of the settings to get them all to come up. But once they did, they stayed up, and even through a reboot, everything worked properly. When it comes to the camera on this new laptop, the picture is pretty good. The white balance is a little bit too warm, uh, but overall, the picture is not overly sharp. It's not overly digitized. Like, it looks okay for a built-in camera on a laptop. There are some built-in features as well to give you some AI stuff, including automatic framing, which the camera will then kind of follow you around as you move, just like Apple's laptop will. So if I move over here, the camera should focus on me over here. You have portrait lighting effects, which kind of changes the lighting just ever so subtly. Like it's really, really hard to see. There's these background effects to basically blur out the background or give you more of a kind of a portrait blur, a bokeh blur, if you will and some other little filter things which are not that great. Now the Surface does have a way to actually keep your eyes focused on the camera using AI, which is a bit kind of freaky. So right now I'm looking at the camera, but as I take my finger and move it to the right side of the screen, I'm now looking to the right, and my eyes are still kind of focused on the front of the camera. And when I move my finger to the left, same thing, or down to the bottom, same thing, it still looks like I'm looking at the camera. Very, very weird. And since all of this stuff is supposedly using AI, I may as well mention that you should not buy this laptop specifically for AI right now. The camera AI and all the AI inside of Microsoft Paint, for example, they're cool, I guess, and there's a chatbot, but you can get better results with other tools. Like in here with Image Creator or Co-Creator, you can kind of draw something and then ask it to kind of make it a little bit better. So we'll kind of make this yellow, whatever. And we'll say, draw me a sun. And we'll see what it gives me. And there we go, using machine learning and AI on here, it gave me a picture kind of representing what crap I drew over here. You can skip that and just go to full image creator and say whatever you want it to draw you, like say a monkey doing a hand stand. And we'll let it run. And down here we have some generated images of a monkey doing a handstand. And that's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on here. That monkey is disformed, but whatever. Uh, these are pretty generic and even using the copilot built in again This is nothing different than you're going to find with the regular copilot client or chat GPT or anything else It's just a chat bot. There's nothing spectacular about this right here. There's no built-in Integration with the computer itself. So copilot can't actually help you do anything on the computer It can't help you change settings or find settings It just gives you generic web browsing search results But the auto translation feature built in is pretty cool when watching video if that's something that you need and maybe the biggest use case for all of the AI on the machine so far. But funny enough, if you're muted, it actually doesn't work. So it actually needs to hear the volume or the sound coming out of the video for it to actually do anything. So if I sit here and watch this video that's in French and don't have the volume turned on, it won't give me any captions. So I have to turn the volume on and let it sit here while it listens. Weird. The biggest AI feature that was announced for these laptops was recall, but that had to be scrapped at the last minute because of privacy concerns. So maybe one day when that comes out to the general public, we'll be able to see what that can do for us on the computer or how it can help us find previous information that we were looking at. But right now, there is no real big benefit to AI on this computer right now, or it shouldn't be a major selling point of a Copilot PC. Windows Hello on this laptop is mostly fast and accurate, and when it is, it feels great, but sometimes it does seem to have trouble recognizing me or taking longer to log in than it should. I keep saying that Apple needs to add Face ID to its laptops, but lately, I've been thinking that maybe fingerprint readers are just the way to go on a laptop. It seems to work more consistently, at least compared to Windows Hello and Face Unlock. The speakers are okay on this Surface laptop. They get loud, but they're missing some of that low end, making them sound just a little bit tinny. They don't fire right at you. They're behind the stuff. So it makes sense that they might be slightly muffled, but they're more than acceptable for regular everyday use for casually watching videos or listening to music. And they are one of the better PC laptop speakers, but they're not my favorite speakers on a laptop. Performance on this laptop is interesting. And since Microsoft compared this laptop to the M3 MacBook Air, so will we. In single core tests, the MacBook Air is about 13% faster than the Surface laptop due to its higher clock speed. But when you move over to multi-core tests, the Surface can be as much as 50% faster due to having 12 cores on the X Elite CPU compared to eight cores on the M3. In graphics benchmarks, the M3 generally does better, like with the 3D Mark Steel Nomad test, where 
the MacBook is 73% faster than the Surface Laptop and Adreno GPU. But none of this matters for how I use this laptop. Like I mentioned before, this is an awesome productivity laptop that feels way faster and more responsive than any other PC laptop I've used. And I've been using PC laptops for a very long time. It is my job. I work on servers. I'm Microsoft certified. Opening apps and websites is speedy. And this guy never feels like it's struggling for the workloads that I'm throwing at it. And when I'm loading it down with a bunch of apps for my regular everyday work and 30 browser tabs, it never gets hot. The fans never ever come on and they're, or they're never audible at least. And the battery lasts all day. I can get through an entire productivity workday starting at 7.30 AM till about 5 PM with this machine and still have about 30% battery left over at the end of the day. I could never do that with any Intel laptop ever. Many apps install and work just fine, even if they're not specifically optimized for this new architecture because they're using Microsoft's Prism translation. There are some that I've tried to install like Google Drive that just won't install at this time. This seems to be a bit more limiting than Apple's Rosetta 2 that was released with the original Apple Silicon Max where basically everything would install and run. But for the apps that install and work on the Surface Laptop, it runs basically flawlessly for me. The 15 inch Surface Laptop 7 has been a great computer for the last month, doing everything I needed to do. There are more promised AI features coming that may or may not change how I use this machine and more updates are coming for Windows and the apps to help compatibility. Maybe these machines will turn out to be more powerful with these updates for graphics than they are now, and that would be great. But until then, this will be a great productivity machine that finally matches some of the benefits of the Apple laptops. Now, I did do a full comparison between this 15 inch Surface Laptop 7 and the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And if you're interested in seeing that comparison side by side, check out that video right over there. If you have any additional questions about the Surface Laptop 7, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time.